for all of us in the economic world, especially people who work on public finance in India. On February 1, we have the union budget. And of course, this time is going to be a vote on account, but there is going to be something certainly there. It is just before the uh, elections. So we thought we'll continue with our practice of dedicating four sessions to the fiscal policy of our country. So we have divided this time into two. We have divided it into two. Our first two sessions are dedicated to Northeast and our next two sessions will be Northeast and other part of the country. So the first two sessions are totally dedicated to Northeast. Because it's a vote and account, what we're doing is we are dividing and this is not airtight. Today is the budget discussion and next will, will be the finance commission. So we'll have budget and Northeast and next week we will have finance commission and Northeast. So these are the two things which we are going to do dedicated to Northeast. To, uh, to undertake this session, we have Professor Minakshi Raji with us. She's a professor at uh, Isaac Bangalore and she's right now in Jammu. She has agreed to chair this session for us. She's, uh, she has been the RBA, I think she continues to be on the RBA chair uh, at the Institute of Social and Economic Change in uh, Bangalore. She has worked as a faculty and taught in University of California at San Diego, Central Michigan University, USA, Center for Studies in Social Sciences, Calcutta, Presidency College, Calcutta. Her areas of research include game theory, which she's teaching now, and banking and credit market, industrial economics, Development Economics. She has published more than 100 articles in reputed journals and has working papers in India and abroad. Her recent books, Emerging Issues in Economic Development from Oxford University Press and Financial Assess of the Urban Poor in India, a story of exclusion from Springer are really important and worth mentioning. She has visited a large number of universities in US, UK, Germany, France, and Norway including Cornell University. And of course, she has been at California, San Diego. She has been at Castle University, University of Essex. She has graduated from IIT Kanpur in statistics and did her PhD in mathematical economics from the Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata. With this, I hand over the session to Professor Menakshi to conduct the proceedings uh, on. Professor. Thank you, Professor uh, Charansi, uh, for this opportunity and this uh, nice introduction and uh, for this interesting session as well, because uh, we know that this uh, northeast part of India is very, very important uh, uh, part in the country because of its distinct topography, historical background and the sensitive geopolitical environment that we have. And therefore, development of this region is of critical importance for the geopolitical importance that this uh, segment has in the country. Now, also the leveling of the regional imbalance is also necessary in order to have a kind of peaceful existence in this region. Now, even though, as you have mentioned, that this will be a vote of accounts, it's an interim budget, but because given the possibility, given the very high probability that the same government will come back. So one would expect that it would adhere to the usual development goal that it uh, set out in the beginning and it will continue in this. And therefore, I think it will um, continue with its emphasis on digital technology and ease of doing business, infrastructure development, uh, development of the manufacturing sector, make in India kind of program, and domestic innovation as well as export. So these things are also going to be very, very important for the Northeast region as well. Now, as we know that the Northeast India has a separate uh, budget head in the budget under the Ministry of Development of the Northeast region. And um, uh, it is uh, getting last year, it got uh, much higher allocation within this uh, budget head. It was uh, 
2,653 crore in 2021-22, which increased to 2,700 odd crores in the next year. But after that, there was a 114% increase in this budget, increased to 5,890 crore rupees, and primarily due to Prime Minister's uh, divine uh, program, which has a uh, number of apt kind of uh, objectives uh, to fund infrastructure in this region in a convergent way. Also support social development uh, programs and enable livelihood activities for the, especially for the young and the women, and to fill the development gaps of the various uh, sector of the region. So this uh, is uh, particularly um, important. Um, uh, therefore, uh, will remain important for the reason, but uh, because this is a vote of account, so we don't know how much of this will get emphasis. Um, but together with, I think, uh, generally speaking, together with the outlays that I spoke about, it's also very important to emphasize the output and outcome budget for the Northeast India. That's, I think, is of critical importance. Central government is giving a lot of importance uh, to this with certain measurable indicators to understand this output and outcome, and which is, I think, one should emphasize for the Northeast part of India. Very briefly, uh, Charan has given me 10 minutes to speak. Very briefly, uh, five uh, just concerns I will uh, flag um, uh, of this reason. Number one is, um, of course, employment generation, which is a concern for this reason. If we look at the um, kind of labor force participation uh, rate, and um, you see that the last uh, survey, PLFS survey, you see that the all India unemployment rate was shown as uh, around 4.8%, uh, whereas Assam has almost double of that as unemployment rate. Nagaland has 25%. So this is one likelihood generation, employment generation through employment intensive industries is going to be a concern and going, should be an emphasis of the budget, either this one or when they uh, present another full budget in after the election. Sectorally, if we look at the Northeast India, uh, very important to note that Northeast India has a much higher uh, share of the primary sector, where the primary sector in Karnataka, for example, is only 12%. Uh, Assam is uh, double of that around 28% as per 2021-22 data. So primary sector, that is basically agriculture sector's emphasis is going to be very important. In the last budget, there was some emphasis on organic farming, etc. development, and this should remain as a emphasis in the next uh, budget also. And apart from, of course, manufacturing, which is needed for job creation, there are two programs. One is industrial development of the backward and uh, remote areas, and other is northeast industrial development schemes. Both these schemes have come to a close, and uh, we would uh, definitely like to see some more uh, programs on industrial uh, development. As far as the services are concerned, uh, there are various areas. Just I highlight one um, is that government healthcare delivery system, where um, there are some index has been built. And um, if we look at uh, the northeastern state in terms of government's healthcare service delivery and administration of public health, um, you will see that the indices values of the northeastern states are much lower than many other states of India. For example, Maharashtra or Gujarat has an index value around 65 to 70, whereas Assam is at 47. So use of digital technology, funding for digital technology, schemes having digital technology for the improvement of the governance is also of critical um, uh, importance. And uh, finally, uh, I'd also like to emphasize on the issue of gender, uh, because if we look at the MOSPI uh, uh, site 
from the MOSPI side, if you look at the gender inequality index, you will see that Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, even Sikkim, which is such a developed state uh, within the Northeast uh, and compared well with any other developed states, a very high ranking in terms of uh, rank 29, Assam 23, Arunachal 36. So they are at the bottom of this gender development or gender inequality index. So gender component of the budget also assumes importance in, uh, for the Northeast region. So I hope that today's panel with eminent scholars from the Northeast of India will shed light on some of these critical issues, as well as many more important aspects of North, uh, Northeast, which we would like to see either in the interim budget or in the full budget. So without any further delay, let me first introduce the panelists of today. And we have with us uh, Professor M.P. Bejburua, an MA uh, from Delhi School of Economics and PhD from Guwahati University, Professor Madhujya Bejburua, is the professor and head of the Department of Economics, Guwahati University. And um, he's a very eminent scholar and specialized in Northeast issues. He published extensively uh, five books to his credit and 50 or more papers, more than 30 articles in edited volumes. And he also held many important positions as member of ICSSR, director in the board of Assam Power Distribution Company Limited, member of RBI Committee on Financial Sector Plan for Northeast India, director in the board of directors of the Assam Industrial Development Corporation, member of the advisory committee for preparation of human development report for Assam, and many more such. He is also an expert for our IGRO Foundation. We are very happy to have you today as a panelist. And um, our next panelist is um, Professor Vijay Kumar Singh. I hope he will be able to join very soon with us. Professor Singh is a professor of economics at Manipur University. He is also an alumni of the Delhi School of Economics. He has been teaching economics at the PZ and PhD level for a very long time. And his areas of interest are also development issues of the Northeast regions of the country, including border trade, including public finance of the Northeast region, and so on. He is an active member of the Northeastern Economic Association and the Indian Economic Society. The Economic Association and the Manipur Economic, Indian Economic Association and the Manipur Economic Association. And he has also published extensively on various aspects of development of the Northeastern region of India. And finally, we also have with us, very happy to have with us, Professor Indranil Bhoumik. Professor Bhoumik is presently professor at the Department of Economics in Tripura University. And um, uh, he has worked uh, on various issues of uh, on Northeast, especially the livelihood and the development of the Tripura economy. Mm, as he worked on for extensively on the rubber industry, he worked on MNREZA and its impact on the Northeast um, uh, region. He is a member of the Northeastern Economic Association, Indian Society of Labor Economics, Indian Economic Sciences Society of Tripura. He has done his uh, MA and PhD from the Vishwavarati University. So we are very happy to have three eminent scholars. And I think uh, uh, each one, uh, I hope uh, Professor, uh, I think Vijay Kumar Singh has uh, joined us. Uh, is that Professor Singh? Uh, so, yes, uh, welcome Professor uh, Vijay Kumar Singh. We have, I have just completed introducing you. Um, so we are very happy to have all three of you and each one uh, I would request to take 15 minutes, then we will have some time for question, answer and discussion. So I first request uh, Professor Madhuri Jabez Burwa to give his um, panel comments. <coughs> Professor Bez Burwa. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Professor Minakshi and uh, of course, uh, Dr. Saran Singh as usual for having us here and putting the Northeast ahead of the country, actually, uh, in uh, this budget discussions. <clears throat> and as both of you have pointed out, actually, this is not going to be the full budget. It is going to be 
uh, you know, votum account or interim budget sort of kind of a thing. Uh, but if we go back, uh, uh, you know, according to our experience, you know, if we have an adaptive expectation model here, for instance, in 2019 also, uh, they had actually the, the, the what you call this votum account was associated with an ad hoc, you know, sort of budget, which was quite detailed. That was quite detailed, and uh, that actually later on, when the same party came back to power, they have more didn't they didn't change the budget very much. Actually, so uh, what is going to be coming in the new uh, you know the budget on first of February? It can be uh, we we can take it quite seriously. Uh, okay, that need to be taken very seriously. But as of now, I don't have a clue as what they are going to uh, talk about. Uh, and since the topic is not so much the budget 24-25 and the northeast, it's rather Indian budget and the northeast. So uh, I'd like to take uh, take the liberty to you know sort of go back to the history. How northeast you know, in the India Indian budget, you always find some paragraph or some section on the northeast. How it actually came into about. So I'll just not take much time. Two or three minutes on that. Actually, uh, most of us who have become quite senior now. If you remember, the budgets were not so much, a, you know, uh, I mean, they did not sort of attract so much of public interest till 1991. You know? Earlier, actually, budgets were presented, then uh, targets were never fulfilled. You may have, you know, uncovered deficits and all those kind of stuff. Then fiscal deficit targets, people are not even concerned about it. But from 1991 onwards, when we had these economic reforms, Budget became more serious, effort. particularly in the early years. What happened actually is that, I mean, it was also unfolding the re, the, the reform agenda. So everybody was looking very, you know, uh, sort of with a lot of enthusiasm onto the budgets and related speeches. And at the same, and around the same time, what happened actually is that, uh, as we moved to a market oriented market oriented economic system, it was realized that you know. Relatively backward areas like Northeast actually are going to have more problems. In fact, the Northeast had a lot of problems right from the partition of India after it got disconnected uh, mostly. And in the 50s and 60s, of course, we all know that uh, the region didn't receive uh, probably the amount of attention it should have received. And in, in the 70s and 18, government actually started uh, doing something, but that, those were very, very Sort of uh, reactive, you know. There was a problem somewhere. It's a, it was kind of a firefighting kind of experience, you know. Uh, but from 90s onward, this is a very important time again because uh, the then very powerful finance minister was an MP from Assam, so he took special interest in the northeast and uh, the planning commissions that Sukla Commission uh, instituted the Sukla Commission, which gave us a report that yes, the northeast actually has been lagging behind seriously in basic services and uh, infrastructure particularly and then onward we find that successive ministries have actually put a lot of fun by this means or that means into into northeast so a lot of investment came in and the result of which we can see today you know the, for instance i can speak for assam and Arunachal Pradesh, perhaps for the other parts of northeast also the connectivity the surface connectivity etc has much more change, you know, much more change. It's much more improved, you know. So that is something which has happened over the years. Now, uh, regarding what to expect from the next budget, uh, probably since in the last two budgets, the government, central government actually has been emphasizing on infrastructure. So that I think will continue perhaps because that's a, uh, that we have made a lot of progress, but still an unfinished, you know, unfinished agenda. So. I think Northeast is going to get a, its due say from uh, that uh, strategy. Uh, another thing, which uh, of course uh, Milakshi Rajan has mentioned, that industrial policy. You know that uh, particularly the traders and uh, industrialists are very keen on this. So Northeast industrial policy, we had two rounds from 2007 to 17, then 17 to I think uh, no 97 to 2007 one, then 2007 to 17. Those actually were well intended policies, but then outcomes were not very well intended. You know, unintended consequences were many. So after that, we have only projects kind of a thing. So there may be more permanent, more concrete thing which might come out. Uh, so this is something uh, one may one may look with interest. I think people, particularly the traders and businessmen, will be looking at looking at this 
aspect uh, with expectantly. Now, as an SME, I have I have I have noticed one important thing is that you know recently only on the 29th of December, the government has signed an agreement with the uh, this ULFA, erstwhile they were the extremists and you know separatists and all. So they have now come back to the mainstream, and uh, the government has an agreement. And actually, there were uh, a whole financial package also was uh, sort of uh, announced. Amounting to about uh, 1.5 lakh crores. So, how does it unfold in this particular budget? So, this is something of interest. I'd like to uh, watch. Uh, that that also includes one setting up of one IIM. Uh, okay, in somewhere I don't know where exactly. So, this is something you know uh, is a point of interest. So, uh, and so we find that. Uh, uh, from mid 1970s onward, always there is a paragraph on notice. And it was it became so regular that later on, whenever there is a discussion on budget, you know, always the people are going to ask us what is there in this budget for notice. So that was slightly, you know, carried that too too I mean uh, too long actually. I mean, the special treatment cannot be for permanent uh, situation. So that was given, and I think notice should be grateful for this. But uh, I'd like to wind up by saying one more thing. You know, uh, the problem of the notice is not just that of, uh, you know, difficult connectivity, which, as I said, has been repaired to a great extent. I'm not sure about Tripura. I think Tripura is also quite well connected now, but Manipur and Mizoram and Nagaland particularly. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, uh, so maybe Bizai Singh can uh, throw more light on that. Uh, but other parts, the connectivity has improved. But there is another problem in the North East, which no amount of central budget or budgeting can actually help. This is something which people of North East has to sort it out. The civil society, the governments, this work together. This is this barrier, you know. There are barriers within the North East. Some institutional like internal permits, instead of getting those barriers getting reduced, we are having more and more of those barriers. That's one thing. You, you, we construct the things like autonomous councils and all that. So that, those also in a way create some kind of barriers. So there are a lot of jumbles of barriers. I think the, the widespread reform is required regarding that. And other other one is social barrier, ethnicity. Ethnicity is still very strong. Identity issue, you know, which we have not been able to, you know, sort of uh, come to terms with because there are so many ethnic groups, so many linguistic groups, and all that. It's high time that we find a way of peacefully living, learning to learning to peacefully live with each other, and allowing each other the space to uh, to sort of pursue their identity aspirations and all that. So this is something. Unless we can resolve this problem, I think no amount of roads and bridges, you know, and airports are going to help the Northeast to, you know, come up with an integrated economy from which it can actually look forward to. And that is why we see a lot of migration, out migration from Northeast. You see, in the 80s and even in the 90s, I think Assam was a migrant workers receiving state, but now you find a lot of people have actually left. And, uh, I mean, net. There's that out migration from Assam. So uh, these are some of the issues which are not generally discussed in the budget. I think, uh, okay, I, I'd like to stop at this particular point. Thank you, uh, Professor Bezburwa, for uh, uh, bringing up so many issues of Northeast, in, including the ethnic uh, issues. I now request uh, Professor Vijay Kumar Singh to make his uh, remarks. No. Am I yes, uh, Am I yes, uh, it's slightly breaking, but you please uh, go ahead, then we will know. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, uh, the Group Foundation, as well as uh, the chair of this session, for giving this opportunity of expressing uh, my, my thoughts on the uh, budget. Uh, union budget and expectations of the Northeast Union. The budget for this 2024 to 25 being being a basically interim budget, you, you, you cannot expect much uh, from, from this budget. Uh, had it been a normal then then we could have done 
proper exercise uh, in this regard, you know, about, about our expectations and all that. But now, uh, being being uh, actually interim budget, the government also may now many uh, interim actually uh, many populist measures and all those, and uh, those those measures uh, promises may not be kept also. You know. And if promises are are kept, you know, then we, we would have been in a very very different situation. Now, however, when when uh, when I'm asked to, uh, I mean, ex express my my views, expectations of a notice on this uh, budget, the route. Well, I would like to, uh, I I would like to take the opportunity of uh, flagging, which any finance minister uh, uh, should 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 not ignore, you know, if uh, he intends to do. Uh, some, uh, something serious for the for the region. Now, right from the uh, proper budget of 2014-15, uh, presented by Arun Zaitli, uh, Northeastern region has been uh, recognized as a as a lagging region, and uh, uh, there were also some very I mean, uh, serious concerns about the lack of development in the region. And as my predecessor has just mentioned, uh, budgets of the budgets, you know, uh, we had some parallel on the Northeast and it was our actual responsibility to uh, actually hide what is there for the Northeast uh, Union budget, you know. So that we have been doing routinely. You know. Now, uh, right from the beginning of this new of this regime, uh, we we see that uh, capacity and uh, connectivity issues have been given uh, priority you know, uh, for quite some time, and and that is there is also continuing, you know. and uh, and of course the government also. Uh, has tried to take full advantage of uh, you know, actually uh, graduating the Lubis policy into its policy in view of the uh, changing uh, geopolitical situations. And uh, uh, so routinely, routinely we see uh, lots of announcement, this announcement in, uh, in this regard. You know. Now, uh, what I feel is that uh, right from the beginning, there is a policy continuum, and uh, nine years, nine years is too short a period to uh, to examine, uh, to critically examine the actually the efficiency or the appropriateness of the policies. And uh, uh, when we talk about the notice, uh, we should know. Uh, consider this as a as a actually uh, as a uh, homogeneous entity. Entity, yeah. There, there are various actually uh, lots of differences, you know. So on the one hand, you have uh, states like Sikkim with a per capita income of more than three lakhs, and on the other hand, you have states like Manip, like my state, with a very fairly per capita income of around say 57,000 uh, at the uh, in, in, in 2021 20, 22 at, at constant prices you know now then then again you know I mean when we when we talk about the notice as a as a region um, entirely dominated by the primary primary sector also that is not actually uh, not very uh, Accurate also because uh, uh, we see that uh, even though even though in, uh, in, in the notice uh, tertiary sector is dominating right from 1415 onwards in in the in 1415 we had around 47.98 percent of our are coming from tertiary. I'm talking about the northeastern region and uh, and again. In 
around 45.05 percent, and uh, the share of primary se sectors is around 29.22 and uh, 27.47 percent. Now, the the point I want to make is that uh, despite all the policy measures, uh, the economy, the, the structural change in the in, in the economy is not very visible. Uh, so if we if we if we if we try to look at uh, development as uh, you know uh, as a corollary with uh, uh, this structural change, then we we don't see much of the structural change here. In of course, there are uh, I mean again lots of heterogeneity there. Uh, so for example, Sikkim, 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 Sikkim actually uh, the share of manufacturing also is is, is quite high, and. Uh, uh, but nevertheless, during this period, the share declined in you know, so 40, 41% to around, say, 37%. In. Well, so what I would like to say is that uh, during this period, uh, actually structural change has not really uh, come in a very big way. And if you, if you try to look at unemployment, unemployment rate also, uh, unemployment rate is is fairly high in this region. And uh, if you again look at the unemployment of the youth, it is, it is exceedingly high. So for example, in, in Nagaland, uh, the unemployment rate is around 55.2% in 2021. Uh, this, is, this is not per thousand, this percent. This is actually uh, PLFS uh, result. You know. So what I'm trying to say is that in, in terms of unemployment, and then even in the case of uh, multi-dimensional poverty index, uh, we actually, even though, even though uh, for a country as a whole, the poverty index uh, seem to have declined very, very substantially. The ranking more or less remains the same. We are actually, I mean, when you look at the ranking of the states, you know, the Northern states are actually almost aesthetic thing. And then uh, another problem, despite all the policy, policy measures, the, the resource base, the resource base of the region has not developed much. In, if, you, if you look at the uh, uh, own tax revenue to gross domestic, uh, gross domestic rate, then actually almost every, every year, all the uh, bottom um, actually states are the northern states. So we have not really had much of our, of our resources. And, uh, and uh, uh, so what do we expect? What do we expect of the, from, the, from this uh, uh, actually budget is, or rather from budget which will be coming subsequently? Uh, augmentation of the must you know, because without without augmenting the resource base, you cannot expect much you know. And all the time, uh, the northern region actually one of the uh, one of the traits of the region is that uh, from being a vibrant has become so so dependent on the on central. Funding, you know, now actually uh, uh, because uh, uh, there is shown the 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 share of the own tax revenue to uh, gross state domestic product or, or total expenditure. In. Now, so therefore, the to suggest is that uh, capacity. Now, capacity actually, uh, even though even though we we. The, uh, the, uh, the the quality of the works, the quality of the works has hurt because of the lack of capacity. You know. So capacity building in every sense should be the priorities of the of the of the budget. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, in 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 one uh, in the earlier budget, uh, there was a, also a mention about you know agricultural universities. To 
and then, and there you know we may we may have to think about the competitive advantage and what the competitive advantage is we interpret and then it will be taken as given all the time we can we can actually engineer the competitive advantage also so that so that we we, we can achieve uh, better things you know like manufacturing half and all that you know so these are some of the uh, straight thoughts that i would like to share at this juncture you know. thank you thank you uh, thank you, Professor uh, Singh, for this very insightful uh, comments that uh, this Northeast, uh, even though we call Northeast and think as a homogeneous entity, it is not at all an homogeneous entity because uh, different states have different uh, level of progress in various indicators. Means if you really see, I see that the data of Northeast, it's not that Northeast states are always at the bottom in all indicators. In some indicators, Many states are much better, um, much above average uh, uh, compared to the all India uh, level. Um, so thinking of Northeast as a kind of one unit often uh, have this uh, problem of um, uh, thinking that one jacket will fit uh, all. So that is uh, what you have emphasized uh, in this in your uh, intervention now, which is I think really important. And um, also we would like to know from you more about Manipur in the question and answer uh, session. And uh, you also mentioned about Sikkim, which is true that Sikkim has um, about 62% of GDP comes from the secondary sector whereas 7% is only primary sector. So Sikkim has a big uh, manufacturing uh, sector. So the outlay will do all the, the outlay will do all the things we, we cannot expect that. That's why I talked about this outcome and uh, output related. But we next go to Professor Indrani um, and I request him to uh, give his views. Professor Indrani. Uh, good evening. Uh Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, madam. Uh, thank you, Charan Singh, sir, for having me here. It's an honor for me. Uh, actually, I missed out a part of uh, what Bijay sir was saying. Probably uh, I lost my connectivity in between. Uh, coming specifically to the topic of the webinar, why, you know, our expectations, I also strongly believe that uh, if this government continues, the trends that we had seen in the previous budgets, the priority areas are likely to continue. In that case, uh, the seven priorities as mentioned in the previous budget, uh, which includes inclusive development, uh, reaching the last mile, youth power, infrastructure and investment, unleashing the potential financial sector and green growth, all are extremely linked to our region. And uh, our region obviously is not homogeneous, is extremely heterogeneous, uh, not just culturally, socially, uh, politically, but in terms of economics also. Assam has a huge, uh, is the largest state and uh, accounts for almost 65% uh, of the total economy of the Northeastern region. Uh, Tripura follows next with uh, around 10%, uh, Meghalaya, Manipur, and uh, Mizoram comes at the bottom with around three to 4% of the entire economy of the Northeastern region. But uh, the commonality between the states uh, are that the government has to play a big role. The government plays the government spending uh, ranges from around 20 to 50 percent for many of the states. And obviously, the sp government spending in the total GSDP in Assam is the lowest, uh, while it is highest for Arunachal. And uh, but the point which I think is uh, and which uh, MPP sir was. Uh, uh, Bisburwa sir was uh, pointing out, as well as Vijay sir was saying, that there has been a uh, rapid increase in the infrastructural level in the region in the past 10 years. And that has really helped in uh, looking out in a bigger way. And what uh, it appears uh, that this is something which we are, might continue. But this growth in infrastructure, the capital outlay or the financial strength of the state governments are so limited that most of the infrastructural growth that has come into the region has been from the central support. And I believe that is what is going to continue in future also. Now, for this aspect, uh, capital outlay as a proportion of GSDP is highest uh, in Arunachal Pradesh, uh, while it is 
uh, lowest in my state, Tripura, and there has been very uh, sudden changes in the last three, four years uh, in my state in particular regarding the capital outlay. But uh, that is something I think all the states uh, need to focus and we have to uh, continue with our areas. Now, another point which I always uh, think which uh, Vijay sir has also rightly pointed out that uh, is the Northeast region always going to uh, remain dependent on the center for their survival? Is it necessary that we cannot, we always have to look out? How do we increase our own strength? That I think is very important. And uh, in this aspect, we have to find out ways and means so that uh, value addition in this region also uh, gets a momentum. Uh, it is true Sikkim uh, is part of the NER nowadays, but uh, thinking that the Sikkim model is will be applicable to the other northeastern states, I have my reservations in this regard that Sikkim, yes, it is part of NER in terms of policy, in terms of things, but when we talk about the northeastern industrial policy or the NEIAP, uh, it is Sikkim who took the benefit and the benefit was because Sikkim lies only 30 kilometers away from the national transport grid, which, and Sikkim is beyond the chicken snake, which is considered to be the restricting factor for the growth of the Northeastern economy. So if we think that what Sikkim has experienced, the other Northeastern states uh, can also replicate, I think uh, we really need to rethink on that. But uh, what we have to focus upon is that we cannot ignore the fact that all the other states are have international borders and uh, the growth of these states are dependent on our relation with our neighbors. And uh, as ACTIS policy is there, our relationship with Bangladesh is also very important for the growth of Tripura and uh, uh, parts of Assam and Mizoram, Meghalaya. So these are the point and what has, uh, what I think, uh, what I expect from the union budget is particularly about the linkage and the connectivity that we are expecting through Bangladesh. Uh, Bangla uh, the two port of calls which has been uh, announced for Mongla and Chittagong, uh, if they are implemented, if they come, become effective, that can really change the way our transportation and freight sector performs nowadays and that can be a game changer and Tripura stands to gain a lot on that. Now, it is on this aspect that I build up my aspirations, I build up my expectations. Uh, I, I feel that there are immense potentialities or there are certain sectors which the Northeast can really contribute in a big way. Uh, we are, uh, it is true that railway connectivity and air connectivity in this region has improved uh, substantially in the uh, past decade. And why can't we work on these sectors. Why can't we think of having railway coach manufacturing sectors, uh, industries in this region? It And this is not only going to connect to our uh, local states, but this can also act because we are in the process of connecting Akhaura with Agartala, and that gives us a corridor to the mainland as well as uh, we can also explore, uh, explore the possibilities of considering exports of railway coaches, particularly Vista domes and the new uh, type of coach which is, are coming up for the Southeastern Asian countries and as part of our Lucist initiative. Now, that is one part. Another part which I strongly believe that our region can have immense potential is utilization of the several airports that we have. The aviation sector is something which is bound to grow. Uh, means uh, we all uh, think in that manner. Now, with the growth of the aviation sector, the demand for technical manpower is needed. Why can't the northeastern, the airports in northeastern region, uh, many of the airports can emerge as flying schools. We can invite professionals, we can invite tie-ups for setting up in professional units based on this. We In, in Tripura, we have, uh, there are three uh, aerodromes built during the World War period, which are not utilized. Can we think, and, and such an initiative can really have immense multiplier effect and that can change the structure of the economy of the region in a big manner. Connectivity with Bangladesh can alter uh, the entire transport mechanism in the region. Uh, Sabroom, which is likely to emerge as the 
hub for uh, logistics, but uh, some more initiative, some more support uh, through the union budget for speeding up the growth of the land uh, ports might uh, uh, facilitate growth at a quicker speed. Uh, also, I believe that uh, we have immense potential. It is very true that uh, manufacturing sector in the region has challenges, uh, particularly with the existing scenario. But uh, we can think of having manufacturing sectors of uh, small volume, high valued items. We can think of uh, items uh, which uh, are related to ITs. We can think of uh, semiconductors in this region, production of semiconductor in this region can have immense potential and particularly in the backdrop that Agartala is the third internet gateway uh, of India, but we hardly have exploited that. Now, these are areas which have been there for quite some time and we really need to work upon this and instead of building up new issues, let us work upon this. This is what I feel on that aspect. Ut utilizing this IT connectivity can also help uh, the growth of the service sector in this region in big way. Uh, FinTech doesn't require much space, but what it requires is connectivity, what it requires is electricity, what it requires is uh, the necessary networking. Now, and obviously, uh, the Northeastern region with uh, its human capital can be considered as a potential area. Uh, the modalities can be thought of. Uh, similarly, I also strongly believe that the PM Divine, as well as other specific programs which are uh, marked out for our region, have uh, immense potential in changing the energy sector of our region, uh, in changing the science and tech and environment issues in this region, particularly in the backdrop of the G20 declarations that uh, we have taken up. Now, based on G20 issues, there has been proposal for incorporating a uh, lifestyle for environment model, which is the life economy. Now, when we are talking of the life economy, the Northeastern region has immense potential to act as the engine of growth for this region, for the country as a whole. Uh, the region has immense potential to emerge as a center for wellness destination. Uh, there has been points uh, regarding the growth of the merit good sector in this region. Yes, we have had uh, several technical institutions coming up, uh, professional institutions coming up, but uh, I feel there are also another opportunity of the growth of the educational sector, particularly the elementary and the middle level educational sector in this region. This is something because the middle level educational uh, sector does not require immediate placement sector and placement is a big challenge for the northeastern region now building up on the elementary level or the middle level educational sector gives us a time period gives us a gestation period to build the uh, cause for placement now based on this uh, i really hope that the new union budget uh, will give us uh, new dimensions for growth which will propel the Northeastern region as uh, to a greater height so that the employment issues, which Madam uh, was uh, rightly pointing out, which is uh, to be addressed, can be taken care of. We see huge migration, out migration of people from the Northeastern region because of lack of opportunities. Uh, it's not that we are I'm against migration, but the point is, if there are opportunities which can be created in the region, why not uh, make an attempt on it? I would like to stop here right now. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Indranil, uh, for making very pointed intervention in terms of certain sectors that you want uh, in the budget to be more emphasized, such as aviation, such as energy sector. Ma ma can I just come in for a minute? Ma'am, can I just come in for a minute? 
yes yes of course yeah one particular uh, aspiration or what uh, one particular declaration if i can uh, see in the union budget be it the interim or the full budget whenever it comes is uh, there has been huge improvement in the connectivity in the transport section the national highways has come up but if we can see a second bridge over river borak in uh, near bodorpur this is something I would just like to specifically mention. This is something uh, which would really be a great benefit to the vehicles moving towards Tripura and Mizoram because all the vehicles have to cross River Barak, and that is a point. A second lane or a second bridge might really be a great immense uh, from the point of infrastructure. A particular point that I just wanted to make. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. You also emphasize, apart from this uh, very pointed uh, suggestions, connecting with uh, Bangladesh. So, friends, you all agree that we have heard uh, from three eminent scholars from Northeast uh, various issues that uh, Northeast is facing. Not particularly that this budget will give, but uh, the problems that Northeast is facing, which needs some kind of addressing, either in this budget or otherwise. Now, uh, the session is uh, everyone has actually kept on uh, kind of on time. So we have exactly at 5 o'clock, we have uh, uh, kind of completed the uh, panel uh, speakers uh, views and interventions. And uh, now we uh, open this for question uh, and answer session and where we can have uh, more discussion on these issues. And in the chat box, I see uh, Professor S. N. Singh, who is uh, making some uh, comments. Uh, Professor Singh, do you like to uh, ask some questions specifically to the speakers? Professor S. N. Singh. Anyone else wants to ask question? Kindly raise your hands. So that or open your mic and you can um, uh, we can see you or uh, allow you to ask question. I think uh, Professor Sharan Singh. I think Vivek is also looking at. Uh, I don't see anyone raising hands. <coughs> if no one is going to speak out, I ha I just had two uh, reactive points to make. Can I make that? One or yeah, two minutes. Yeah, we, you, you, uh, we, we will just wait for a, uh, one or two minutes. Uh, just if anyone has a question, then together you can answer, I think, uh, with all this. Professor Charan Singh, do you have any question? Sure. I was thinking of giving others, others an opportunity, but as I see there's no hand coming up, I had a couple of questions. Now, one of the questions that I had was for uh, Professor Bijoy. Uh, who's from Manipur. Manipur has seen some difficult times in the recent past. And uh, my view was that in the budget or even the vote of accounts that's coming up, uh, would there be any specific, as an economist, any specific way forward where the government can either employment generation or extension of Mandrega, or skill formation, or uh, skill centers to be opened in Manipur so that the youth can uh, be engaged actively and productively. The issue that uh, Professor Indanil raised, I thought was very, very important uh, on connectivity between the mainland and, uh, no, and, the, uh, and uh, Northeast. So my question to Indranil was, uh, in the meanwhile, I totally agree with you that uh, we have to think in terms of making Northeast a hub of activities. What would you think would really attract foreign companies which have centered their production in China to move to Northeast? Because as you mentioned, Northeast, Northeast is pretty virgin also not very well uh, not very well polluted means in the in the positive sense that it is free of pollution 
generally is uh, encouraging organic farming. So therefore, what do you think uh, the union budget could think in terms of providing incentives so that foreign companies can come into into the Northeast? Uh, Professor Bezberwa, given your wide experience uh, in policy making and your association at different levels, um, especially in the financial sector, my thoughts were, and I had a question for you, uh, how do we make sure that fintech companies can come and flourish in Northeast? And how do we ensure that financial inclusion is far more widely uh, spread in Northeast so that we can reap the benefits uh, of financial inclusion as an economy and more production? more self-help groups, more MFIs can penetrate there and be productive. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, Professor uh, Charansi. We will collect a few questions, then uh, I will request each one of you to give answer to this question or any additional point you would like to make. Now, um, I have a few uh, couple of questions uh, for um, uh, the panelists. Uh, because I am also not seeing any hands. Uh, first is to Professor uh, Bedburu that uh, why um, uh, do we see Assam, which is a plain uh, state and with um, uh, the uh, connectivity is good, but in most indicators among the northeastern state, Assam is too low in terms of even per capita income and many other indicators. So, why Assam has remained so low even uh, after so many uh, years? Like, because Assam, Andolan, and all have uh, come, um, finished long back. So, what is do you? What is your view on that? And about Manipur, um, uh, because I think the inequality is one reason of un unrest in any region. In, I think that's also true of Manipur. That how one can address the issue of inequality in uh, Manipur so that the peace is uh, um, is something that we can uh, expect at some difficult time that uh, Professor Charan Singh was mentioning. So what is your view on uh, that, that? And uh, for uh, Indra Neel has suggested many uh, industries and I agree with him, but uh, is one issue of ease of doing business and my experiencing doing certain things in the northeast region even in assam uh, which you know i could do so quickly in uh, bangalore but uh, the things uh, just doesn't uh, move uh, the official files etc getting some permission etc doesn't move at all it takes one year or more than a year to get some permission so ease of doing business so business people would be facing much more difficulty so ease of doing business is very necessary Necessary for investment uh, to come in. So, what is your view on that? Now, I see one question from Sashwati Choudhury. Do you want to come, Sashwati Choudhury? Sashwati Choudhury. Hello. 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 Yes, yes, please go ahead. We can hear you. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Minakshi, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, ask uh, the three panelists. I just wanted to know like uh, uh, last uh, budget we saw there was a lot of thrust on connectivity uh, by this uh, in the union budget. And then we also came up with the uh, PM divine scheme where we have assorted. Uh, elements there and then for uh, different kind of uh, 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 industrial basic industrial resource based things but there's some things which are yet to take off now uh, mm -hmm. so far as Indronin raised this question of uh, connectivity and all I just wanted to uh, uh, raise this question like uh, as Indronin was also saying uh, can be uh, is there likely to be a provision in the budget for boosting up uh, uh, 
agro processing sectors because we have been exporting uh, basic agricultural uh, uh, food uh, especially horticultural items and then getting back processed things so is there likely to be any provision for setting up augmenting uh, finished products at the uh, regional level uh, do you see any prospect of such an investment uh, or some kind of a proposal from the uh, Ministry of Donor or Food Processing Ministry, anything coming to the Northeast? That's my only question, because other than that, I don't, there's hardly any prospect for setting up any basic industries in Northeast. Other than this, that's what I, I think uh, we have uh, several questions now. I request uh, Professor Bezburwa. Um, I will begin with Professor Bezburwa in the same order and you wanted to make some additional points also, sir. You can make it, make them now. Yeah. Professor Bezburwa, you thank, have Thank you very much. I'll not, I'll not take too much of time. Uh, first of all, let me try and answer this question. Uh, your question first, uh, why Assam is rather low compared to the other Northeastern states in, uh, you know, many indicators, including the per capita income. Now, some of the Northeastern states have per capita incomes, which are actually, uh, in a way, quite exaggerated, you know, because a lot of construction activities, you'll feel if you break up the, uh, the total composition of national income, you'll find construction is an extremely important component in Arundachal produce. Okay. Mm -hmm. And similarly, I think in some other hill states, because it construction takes a lot of cost and the income there is also measured by the expenditure, how much you spend, actually. It's not necessarily how much you earn. So some of the states actually, you know, yeah, I think per capita income is not a good indicator. You have to look at the other indicators also. But regarding Assam, other say literacy and infant mortality and all, this is not generally bad. Actually, you know, there are a couple of uh, communities who are quite substantial in uh, population. Sashwati would have helped me also here because they did that human development report. You know, there are two particularly two communities. One is uh, of you know they, they call them some Adibasi, basically not all tribals here. They are from tea garden uh, workers uh, background and others are the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the people from immigrant, uh, you know, uh, Bengali immigrant Muslim, uh, Muslim community, basically, uh, you know, they're located in the Char areas or riverine areas. So among these two communities, you find that, you know, some of the parameters are very bad. The reason there are historical reasons as well as there are, they are very difficult. They are located in very difficult. If you leave out these two communities, you may find the parameters to be higher. I'm not saying, of course, you should leave out. We should try to pull these communities up so that we together actually grow. So that's my explanation. Uh, secondly, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Singh's question that what can we do about uh, greater financial inclusion in fintech? You know, fintech companies will take some time to come here. Uh, but before that, financial inclusion is an old issue here. You know, if you you know, I would like to say that many of the state governments, I'll come to that resource point shortly, you know, is because there is some kind of a sort of, you know, uh, complacency among the states because they're receiving so much of resources from the uh, center. What happens actually is that the land records have not been, you know, sort of uh, done in most of the hill states and all that. Now, if you ask a bank, you know, to give loans or whatever, they are most comfortable if you have a plot of land. So this is a very old story, which has been repeated all the time and nothing much has been done so far, you know, land settlement and, you know, cadastral surveys and all. This is, I think, you know, it's high time they, they should do it. Regarding uh, the other two points I wanted to make, there are several, but I'll make just two. One is that uh, both uh, Visa and Indonesia has talked about, you know, dependency syndrome, dependency on the central resource being raised by a very low except for us. Now, here again, one is the biggest problem is that, you know, when you had this sales tax and all those kind of tax, you'll find that most of the hill states have lower even indirect taxes. And their direct taxes are even actually absent. You see, there is a rule in the income tax thing that if a tribal person works in a tribal area, the person doesn't have to pay taxes. So that may be, might have been quite fair, you know, in the early days of independence. But now if you go and look up a professor in Mizoram University or uh, another, you know, maybe the chief secretary of Meghalaya, if he is, happens to be rival, you get a salary of four to five lakhs a month and you don't pay an income tax. I would uh, suggest here, I have been suggesting, it's a very unpopular thing, nobody is going to do it, of course, but for the sake of discussion, I have been suggesting that 
I mean, it's not that income tax should be extended to this person, but they should have something tax in lieu of income taxes on the tribals working in the tribal area. I mean, there's a huge middle class with hefty income in the uh, uh, tribal origin population. So th that tax can be collected by the state government itself. If some kind of arrangement can be done, in that case, the dependence on central center will very, very go down. Now that is not going to come forward because, you know, it's basically the elites who are going to be affected and elites actually makes the rule. Okay, so this is one thing uh, which I wanted to say. Another thing, uh, Indonesia made a very strongly a point, which I think I also very strongly support. You know, the activist policy you're talking about, expanding eastward, particularly connecting the northeast with the rest of the country and the rest of the world. I think we really need to look into Bangladesh rather than Myanmar. You know, we have done some flirtation in Myanmar, but that didn't work out. A very unstable government, very unstable economy. My friends from Manipur will be very disappointed if I <laughs> they hear me. You know, they're still hoping to find their way to you know, that uh, trilateral highway to Thailand and all that. But that's not going to happen, in my opinion, because of whatever political conditions in Myanmar and China is also there. I think it's seriously, seriously, we need to explore, you know, access to the Bangladesh so that chicken neck cannot be all the time, you know, constraining the Northeast. And I think reaching out from other parts of the country to Northeast, apart from the chicken neck, that should be there. Okay, these are my points. Thank you, Professor Abbas Burwa. Um, now I request Bijay Kumar Singh, Professor Singh, uh, some comments you want to give on the questions and uh, that are there on Manipur. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> am I audible? Hello? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, actually, for the last few months, uh, Manipur has been uh, passing through a very, very disturbing uh, phase. And uh, uh, because of the ethnic uh, conflict, uh, lots of people have been displaced from their homes. And, and in fact, in fact, uh, it will be a very, very nice gesture from the central government if uh, some provisions are made in the in the interim budget. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean. Uh, actually uh, for the resettlement of these displaced persons in us. Around, around uh, more than 60,000 people have been displaced and uh, uh, we don't see any sign of uh, actually uh, peace coming back in the, in, the, in the near future. So it, will it is going to continue for quite some time. So uh, like uh, for the uh, Actually, Kashmiri pundits, uh, you know, some provisions may be made in the in the union budget also to make uh, to to to, uh, to for the resettlement of these displaced persons. Now, there will be a very very strong message to the to the public that we really do care for for everyone. You know, uh, otherwise uh, otherwise you know, uh, I mean, uh, this is as, as I told you. This is uh, going to drag on for quite some time, and and uh, if we don't take care of the, uh, you know, aggrieved people or displaced people, you know, there will be, there will become more more serious. Thing. And uh, regarding the second second query about the equality issue, uh, now this actually growing inequality uh, is is actually it has become a way of life, you know, and uh, whether we look at in a state, small state like Manipur, or whether we look at the international level, uh, inequality in, inequality has kept on growing. You know, uh, and this this again, uh, you know, can be can be actually uh, considered as a uh, actually uh, a, a, a way of life. You know. Now, as far as Manipur is concerned, uh, we we actually we are trying to make some headway towards uh, dealing these issues to our SDG uh, goals and policies, you know. But uh, uh, COVID came and that actually, uh, actually undid most of the uh, achievements uh, in this regard. And uh, we, we are thinking that once this is over, we will again get back to the, to the normal work and uh, we will try to uh, actually make up for the 
uh, opportunities all the time lost, you know. But now, now we have another crisis, you know. And so, I mean, uh, that is not going to happen for quite some time. But uh, growing inequality uh, is a is a very very big issue, you know. And uh, I don't I don't see I don't see uh, actually uh, actually um, any anything to suggest that it is uh, it is it is going to uh, come down or, or, or uh, is going to become uh, less, you know. So, so we have to actually, I mean, uh, get along with this and uh, and see what can be done okay. in, in this regard. Okay. So that's all. I'm okay. Uh, I request uh, Professor Indranil also to quickly answer your question so that we can very quickly go one more second round and wind up. Professor Indranil. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, very specifically to the queries made by. Uh, Chalan Singh, sir, is that, sir, regarding uh, your expectations of FDIs in this region, uh, yeah, if the union budget makes some specific provisions, particularly, I, I don't expect that the, if there would be FDIs in the manufacturing sector in the region right now. But there are opportunities of FDI in the service sector, particularly relating to the hospitality and wellness industry. If there are special provisions in the budget, particular for exploiting or utilizing the pristineness of this region, I think that can be considered. That is one point which uh, comes to my mind right now. Uh, regarding, ma'am, your question on the ease of doing business, it is very true. Uh, the ease of doing business in this region is not so easy. <laughs> As a result, the transaction costs are much higher in this region. Oh, and even uh, the very recently published leads index, the logistics is uh, across different states. The logistics aspect is also not very strong. The states of the region do not uh, rank in the top tier. But uh, regarding ease of doing business, I think it is high time that we, the people from the Northeast, also take this initiative and realize that we have a role to play. It is very important that it is our future generation who are going to miss out. If the ease of doing business in this region does not improve, it is my future generation who is going to suffer. So why not the civil society come in a big role, uh, play a big role in ensuring that the state governments also play active part in improving the ease of doing business in this region. There have been certain initiatives uh, by several state governments and uh, there have been uh, investor meets in many of the states. Assam has taken the lead. There has been things in Tripura. But the overall environment and uh, the positive vibe, I, need, I think we really need to work a lot on uh, improving the vibe that, yes, uh, we are changing and we are changing for the better, needs to spread out uh, with greater earnest. That's uh, what I feel uh, to your context and uh, for there was uh, it is very true uh, uh, what Shashwati madam has uh, pointed out about the agro processing uh, possibilities if any specific uh, uh, declarations I would also expect uh, that if there are certain uh, declarations on the plantation sector particularly on the rubber plantation sector the rubber plantation uh, the northeastern region is considered as the second rubber growing zone uh, it is emerging with uh, more than uh, uh, 4 lakh hectares now in the offline for production, but we do not have rubber goods manufacturing sector. If there are any declaration in the union budget for setting up uh, some kind of value chains uh, relating to rubber, I think that is something uh, will has a potential. I would like to stop Thank here you. right now. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Indranil. We will go for very quickly go for second round because I saw one hand uh, from Professor S. C. Agarwal. You would yeah. like to ask a question? Yeah, yeah, Sorry, madam. you have to wait for some time. Yeah. No, no madam, I would yeah, like please. to ask a question that currently there is a huge existing infrastructure lying idle, which can be used to generate electricity in every house. That is rooftop solar installations. Can is it being uh, used uh, by northeast uh, people to generate their own electricity in their own houses? This is my question. Okay. okay. Any other question uh, from anyone else? 
Yes, uh, Krishna. Krishna is there and Sugam Agarwal is there. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Krishna and uh, Sugam Agarwal, please ask your question one after another. Yeah, should I ask? Yes, please. Yeah. So I want to ask, uh, what is the stance of the government if we see from the last five year budget, particularly to the Northeast? So which uh, sector they are focusing? Mainly they are focusing on the manufacturing or the service sector. First thing is that. And uh, if uh, uh, they are focusing, suppose on the manufacturing and the service sector, then which uh, industrial policy they follow? Because what we have seen is that uh, in 1980, there is a national commission that policy is there mainly to focusing on backward areas. But the research in 2016 shows that the financial incentives like the tax and subsidies did not work. So I want to ask which industrial policy might play a role. Suppose okay. I have, uh, yeah, so this is my. Uh, I request Mr. Krishna to ask question. see anyone and uh, there are some chat box have uh, one uh, Dave some Dave is asking question Mr. Dave any comments on the international migration from Bangladesh and Burma what about environmental degradation in the northeast and budget allocation for the same so some kind of budget for environmental restoration and the migration issue from Bangladesh and Burma to Northeast, how they are, maybe they may not be the issues in the budget, but these are the two uh, comments I see in the chat box. And uh, tourism hotel, etc. Anyone else? Uh, Professor uh, Charan Singh is raising hand. I cannot see in my screen. I can only see Krishna and I don't know why you have invited Krishna and she has not asked a question. Krishna? Because Krishna has still raised her hand. I okay. I think we can uh, wind up with the second, uh, this second round. Uh, so I would request um, uh, the panelists, um, we were, uh, wish to answer uh, some uh, few questions that are asked in the second round. Mm, uh, about the solar in the electricity generation and uh, the question that uh, you asked now. So, uh, Professor Guru, uh, Madhuja Bais Guru, you yeah. want to ask and answer? So, uh, I would not like to monopolize all the three questions. Uh, so <laughs> I'll just try to answer the first and the third. Second also, I had an answer, but then I think let someone else answer. Rooftop, actually, it has become quite popular in uh, many uh, government buildings and all that. Uh, and uh, uh, solar panels have been uh, are there, and electricity. If you have, uh, it, is, it, is, uh, it is used in the house, and and the, and the surplus is, you know, sort of linked to the grid. That is there, but not in the household. One of the problems in the household is that you know the house structures are largely different here. It's not like the you know sort of uh, flat uh, concrete roof kind of structure. We have this assam type tin roof houses and all that. That's one thing. And second thing is that northeast actually remains cloudy for a large part of the year, you know, and therefore yeah, yes, yes. So that mm -hmm. actually so it has a limitation. But in government buildings, large buildings, they are employing this. So uh, that's the first thing. And last one is that environmental. Somebody was asking about environmental rest restoration. Restoration. Yeah, that will be really required, you know, particularly at one point of time we thought the Arunachal Pradesh can generate so much of electricity that the whole half of the country can be lighted from that but once we tried you know tried exploring that possibility we have found that the downstream all the problems are there and same thing is happening from the hydro power stations from Bhutan so we have devastation you know uh, in the downhill because of this uh, what you call this uh, hydro projects I think very, very importantly, urgently, you know, something needs to be done to restore this uh, environmental disasters. So, other one also the infrastructure tax and all that. So, anyway, I'll not, I should not try to monopolize everything. <laughs> so, I'm leaving that to someone else. If no one is taking, yeah. I'll. Yeah. Anyone, uh, uh, Professor Indranil or Professor Singh? 
you want to address any other question? Yeah, actually, uh, I would just like to make some comments on the on the migration issue. Uh, actually, the, the, every section of society with my at one time we were mainly concerned with the migration from Bangladesh. These uh, Bangladeshi migrants passing to various states and then landing up in Manipur and uh, other uh, remote areas. And, uh, really connected with all our, most of our uh, problems at this season. Um, because of the disturbed conditions, in, in people have been have been coming to our state and then we know that actually it has been welcoming them and accommodating them in every way. But, uh, but there are also misunderstandings uh, of these various various groups you know, and uh, um, the, actually, the disturbed conditions in in Myanmar getting connected to our and so well, ethnic crisis in the in the in, the, in, the, in particular uh, so, uh, uh, Myanmar is migrants they very very uh, role you know, and and in fact they they uh, really. They seem to be very, very different from the, from say, Bangladesh or other, other places, or say, or uh, Nepal and, and others, you know. Because, because, you know, we have been, we have been having migrants for so many years, you know, uh, and we have been accommodating them. But uh, this time, it is, it is becoming very, very difficult, you know. So, uh, so this, this issue, this issue actually uh, needs to be looked into very, very seriously. Okay. And, uh, okay. uh, and uh, that is why I, I was saying that even in the even the interim budget, uh, we I mean, we may provide provide some funds for the resettlement of the displaced people, you know. and, and and to all the parties involved that uh, the government really for their welfare, you know. But this will be amicably settled, and we are looking forward to some 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 solution in the near future, but. Uh, uh, this issue of migrants, you know, uh, okay. exploding has been has been actually has been uh, uh, has been something quite uh, quite new to us also. You know, we never thought uh, in this manner. So, so then must I want to say? Okay, Professor Indranil, you have uh, some last comment from you very quickly. Yeah, Madam. Uh... Regarding uh, the issue of industrialization, po industrial policy, which uh, there was a query, uh, I think it is high time that we really have a new kind of policy, a kind of uh, renovation into the existing Northeast and uh, industrial policy for the Northeast. Uh, it is quite some time and it needs reworking. That's uh, my statement on that. And uh, a wishful thinking on the budget right now, uh, which uh, with which I would like to conclude, is that uh, Agatala is unique in a sense that it is the only state capital uh, with an international border. Uh, I would be very happy if the union budgets have some special scheme for uh, highlighting this point, like we have centers in Waga. We can also have similar kind of activities in the Agartala integrated check post, which can itself be of great attraction to the tourism sector and the hospitality sector at large. Uh, that's my wishful thinking right now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's a very, really a good uh, idea of like Waga border uh, in Northeast also something similar. Okay. So I think friends, we had a very lively session and I thank EGRO Foundation for this, uh, bringing so many scholars and so many people interested in Northeast. I, did, I have not seen so much discussion in on Northeast uh, otherwise, but 
for Professor uh, Saran Singh, who gave this emphasis and having this kind of um, all India level, national level discussion on Northeast. I'm really thankful to you. Your seminars are so successful, as we all know. And um, and your this uh, Northeast uh, seminars you have been holding. Uh, over the years, several such seminars, which are really very useful for such reasons, such as Northeast. You should also think of holding some such seminar now for the Jammu and Kashmir reason, because I, I am here now. <laughs> so, but we had a very insightful discussion with uh, very eminent uh, panelists giving their thoughts and their inside uh, knowledge, because they all live in uh, Northeast and walk in Northeast. So, I thank um, all the participants as well as the panelists and over to uh, Igro Professor Charansi. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Minakshi, for chairing this session because you are from Northeast. Your, your views and your knowledge and expertise on Northeast helped us in such a beautiful discussion today. So thank you for that. I must share this um, Indradeer's idea. It's simply beautiful. Uh, in the deal, I was in Ayodhya last week uh, for the Indian Economic Association meeting in uh, Lucknow, and uh, I went to Ayodhya and I saw the Arti there, the riverside Arti, and full of people, crowd, and so fascinating. So it's not only that the Arti is done in um, Hardwar, it's even done in Ayodhya. Now it's such an attractive to tourist, um, such an attractive thing for tourists. So I totally agree with you uh, what the point you made, like Wagga border, if we can have something like uh, in your state and in other states, uh, that really attracts the tourists and also is very, very, uh, I think it generates lots of employment opportunities. As well as so I'm thankful to you for this um, creative and innovative thought and we'll I hope somebody in the government likes that idea and takes it up. Takes something, yeah. <laughs> and now I must mention that next week we have the discussion on Finance Commission and Northeast. So I think again that's going to be a fascinating discussion. Same time, 4 to 5:30. I'm going to request each one of you who participated today. To please come. There's another very good panel which we will have next week. So you will enjoy the discussion up there. Given the expertise that Professor Minakshi has, I'm going to explore with her offline if she will chair that session also. So there's continuity between the budget and the finance commission discussion. So we'll do that and you will get the flyer in a day or two. With that, let me there is some you. request of, uh, that we should, some, uh, we should open the camera so that uh, one can take a photo in the box chat box. It is coming again and again. Uh, uh, if if the participants wants to open on their camera, they may do so. Uh, if whoever wants to take some photo uh, can do so. And you know the point that Krishnan was uh, asking and could not ask. Could what? not ask because his no, audio is not working. Yeah. Mm. And the question I thought was a good question, and we mm. probably take it up in uh, next week or if as a chair about the value chain of manufacturing. Uh, you were high end of the value chain of manufacturing. Yeah. Value, ch value chain is very important today. Yeah. yeah. So mm. that is one good question. Uh, mm. So uh, we could even R and D and innovation. R and D innovation as well as value chain development, effective and efficient value chain development, have become very important for any manufacturing uh, process today, uh, including uh, services also. So right. you have made a very important observation there, uh, Chris. Right. So then let me invite you for the next week, uh, next Friday, same time, four to five thirty, Finance Commission, and the uh, Northeast. With that, once again, thank to each one of the panelists, Professor Bez Brewer, Professor Indanil, Professor Bejoy, despite the technical challenge Professor Bejoy had, he <laughs> connected us through the phone, then he connected us through, I think, the laptop back to phone. So I think he has had multiple challenges. So thanks to all of you for enriching this discussion. Thank you. <laughs>